Well, hey there, friends. Pastor Mark McElraith here, and today is February 8th, which puts us on page 35 of our uh, devotional reading out of the book, The Reservoir. Um, if you uh, hadn't had a chance to read that yet, I encourage you to go and read that and then come back and join me for just a little devotional reflection on that text. You know, as uh, you've taken a look at that passage, you realize in Genesis, this amazing story of Jacob. Um, it kind of jumps from one portion to the next with Jacob and Esau. You know, at the beginning, Jacob uh, was deceiving his father Isaac terribly into thinking that he, Jacob was actually Esau and therefore stealing Esau's blessing. What a terrible offense that was back then in those days. And so um, it was horrible uh, what he did. Well, then if you move forward in the story, you'll see how uh, Jacob encounters God and wrestles with God, has this really intense encounter with God. And then we jump forward to the next segment that you saw in your scripture reading where Jacob and Esau are reconciled. Wow, what, what a transformation uh, for Jacob, you know, from one point to the other. Uh, God was at work in his life and transformed him. I you know what's interesting about this text, it shows, that the, shows us that God uses unlikely people for God's own purposes. As a matter of fact, Jacob was not a good guy, and yet God actually still used him. God met with him. God encountered, uh, had an encounter with Jacob. And in doing so, Jacob then becomes transformed. What our text is really telling us here is that God is the, the initiator of it all, not us. Uh, it just seems obvious, actually, all throughout Scripture, you can see different uh, characters that God uses, and they're all flawed, and some of them are actually not very good guys at all, like Jacob in the, in the beginning. So God calls people when they are actually unworthy and untransformed, and yet, as people respond to God's calling, they see that they are transformed. Sometimes we think that we're the ones that are initiating the call to God. We're seeking out God. But really, it's God seeking out us. It uh, reminds me of the story from the Chronicles of Narnia. And I probably shared this with you before, maybe in a sermon or something. I love these books. And I love C.S. Lewis. And I love this particular story. Uh, the Silver Chair uh, by C.S. Lewis. In that book, a boy named Scrub tells a girl named Jill about this magical land of Narnia. And they try to get there by calling on Aslan. Now, Aslan is the Christ figure who is the lion in, in that story. But then they find themselves in Narnia, but they get separated. And that's when Jill has her first encounter with the lion Aslan. Now, she has no idea that Aslan is a lion. She just knows Aslan is a name that she was calling on, and that's it. And so here's where the story picks up. And now, said the lion, the boy is safe. But your task will be harder because of what has to be done. Please, what task, sir? said Jill. The task for which I called you and him here out of your own world. This puzzled Jill very much. It's mistaking me for someone else, she thought. She didn't dare to tell the lion this, though she felt things would get into a dreadful muddle unless she did. Speak your human thoughts human child, said the lion. I was wondering, I mean, could there be some mistake? Because nobody called me and Scrub, you know. It was we who asked to come here. Scrub said we were to call to, well, to somebody. It was a name I wouldn't know. And perhaps that somebody would let us in. And we did. And then we found the door open. You would not have called to me unless I had been calling to you, said the lion. Then you are that somebody, sir, said Jill. I am. And now, hear your task. And the story goes on. But I love that image that Jill felt like she was the one calling out to this Aslan name. But really, in the, in the end, it was Aslan calling to her and to Scrub. Um, 
God initiates the call on people's lives, even when they are unworthy, even when they don't understand it, even when they don't know it, even when they are untransformed, just like Jill, just like Jacob in our story, in our scripture story. As a matter of fact, even our own salvation is a pure gift for us. We didn't initiate it. We don't do it at all. God did it through Jesus Christ for us. Saying yes to God's call in your life is what happens before any kind of transformation can happen. When you respond, that's when the transformation starts to happen as Christ works in you, just like we see with Jill and just like we see with Jacob in Scripture. So God initiates that call. And God is the one who then can transform you. That's why God initiates call to people who are totally unworthy, because of course they're unworthy. They don't have God's transforming work in their life yet. As a matter of fact, I like this phrase. You've probably heard it before. It says, God loves you just as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. That's true. God loves you just as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. So that feeling that you have in your heart, the tugging for something more, tugging for something deeper, that's Christ calling to you first, beckoning you first into a deeper relationship with him. So say yes to that and then watch the transformation happen. You see, God loves you just as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way.